really use a four-letter word, but um, of uh, censoring r r real speech. I mean, think about it. You know, if, if somebody comes out and whether they're a candidate for political office or whether they're a person who's accused of a crime and expresses him or herself in a language that we all hear used every single day, right, from the time we're in what, late elementary school, yeah, early by middle school, cool. <laughs> in the schoolyard, <laughs> people are talking with, with all these words, and yet, why can't we say them, you know, why can't we even use them, why can't we even quote them mm -hmm. in media? Yeah. Uh, this all goes back to the Carlin case, in, in mm -hmm. the case of broadcast um, radio and television. Yeah. You realize it was a very different era, and this is way pre-internet, this is when, you know, people were passing around copies of Playboy magazine for <laughs> thrills. Yeah. Um, this, is, this is way pre, you know, explosion of pornography um, with the internet. And that if standards are very different, so if a father, for example, did feel that his 15-year-old boy uh, should be shielded from hearing the seven words that they can't say on TV, well, that was a defensible position. However, that's not what really was going on. What was going on is that uh, the battle that, as I said, had gone on since the American Revolution was taking place uh, in another guise, and there was this group of people who felt that um, morality dictated by religion indicated that certain things absolutely could not be exposed in public. And um, these were people who obviously anti-gay, uh, these were people who obviously were um, anti-sexual um, freedom, um, you know, they were, they were part of an American tradition of mora moralization and um, repression, mm -hmm. you could say, whereas mm -hmm. people like George Carlin were completely on the other side. I mean, he thought it was a riot that these people were mm -hmm. as limited as they were, <laughs> and he was making fun of them.